Hey everybody, welcome back to RC with Adam. My name is Adam, and in this video, I want to show you something that has come up for me in my 3D modeling journey. So I started using, uh, well, I started 3D printing about, about six months ago or so, and in that, like many people, I started using Tinkercad. But then, also like many people, I sort of graduated to Fusion 360, and I've been using Fusion for a lot of design stuff, and I love it, it's fantastic. Now, the thing is, I ran into a problem, which is that I just wanted to make a very simple modification to an STL file, specifically a gear for a secret upcoming project that, well, it may or may not work, so I won't announce it yet. But anyway, uh, all I needed to do was make a, uh, a hole larger in the center of a gear. And the thing is, in Fusion 360, in order to make that happen, I had to get the STL file into Fusion 360 and an STL file is like what they call a mesh. And so a mesh file, you can't work on a mesh file in Fusion. So you have to turn it, you have to basically turn it into a body, a solid body. Um, and I, I may not be using all the terms correctly. I'm still learning. Uh, so anyway, it's a multi-step process. And for somebody like me, who's not super familiar with all the different, uh, different, you know, uh, uh, functions and features and little things about Fusion 360, it's kind of a, kind of a daunting task. Like it, like I had to watch a few tutorials, and there are some good tutorials. But here's the thing: what I realized is that I could do this very, very easily in Tinkercad. So let me just show you what I'm talking about here. Let's jump on into Tinkercad. And by the way, if you want to learn how to uh, modify an STL file or convert it into a workable file in Fusion 360, check out this tutorial right here from uh, Product Design Online, Kevin Kennedy, a uh, very good example. There are some other good examples as well. But anyway, it's, it's a multi-step process. And so if you are uh, a beginner or if you just don't have Fusion 360, uh, this is a much easier way. So we're in Tinkercad here and let's, uh, let's drop a ruler on our workspace here and let's get uh let's say import an stl file and so i'm going to choose let's just choose uh this one right here by the way this is from a large selection of gears made by this person on uh grabcad and so go check that out uh, because it's it's a really great uh selection but having fun with these anyway let's pick one of these stl files we'll put it in here and then we just want everything like how it normally is and let's hit import and it may take a minute uh, to import this. It's kind of a large uh, file. And as a mesh, it is like a very complicated, it's a complex mesh. And so in Fusion 360, you have to like da sort of downgrade the mesh, if you will. I don't know. I'm not sure what the technical term is, but that's another step that you have to do in Fusion. And I think that's why this is taking so long to import um, in Tinkercad. Okay, it's just taking its sweet, sweet time. All right, there we go. So now we have our uh, file here, or I mean our, our, our STL, our model, our gear, pretty sweet. But let's, so like, let's say, you know, just to show you kind of how simple this is um, or how you might go about doing this, let's, let's say we want to make sure that we use the midpoint for the measurements here. And let's zero, uh, zero this out. Let's bring the midpoint to the origin of our ruler like that. So then we could just take a cylinder because again, I, I wanted to make a larger size hole. And let's say I want to make this, let's make the cylinder like five millimeters. I think that's larger. Is that larger? Yeah, it's a little bit larger. Um, let's make it, well, let's make it like 10 millimeters just so it's more obvious for this demonstration. And then we will uh, use the midpoint for this as well. And we'll zero that out and we'll zero out the it's already zero. Yeah, okay, it's already zeroed. And then we just have to select both of these. And then we go to combined, click on combined, and voila. There we go. So now we have a, uh, and actually I should have changed, I should have made, added more sides to this cylinder so that it would be like a little smoother. Uh, I don't know that it would actually be noticeable. That might be noticeable, those lines there, with how big those lines are. But uh, basically, that's the whole process of just making a simple modification to an STL file in Tinkercad. So, if, if again, if this was Fusion 360, it'd be a much uh, bigger process. And if obviously, if you're like a professional using three, Fusion 360, 
and you know what you're doing, then it's it's not even it's not even a big issue. But I'm just saying, if you're kind of in that in between phase of where like you're still using Tinkercad and still using Fusion 360, there's nothing wrong with Tinkercad. There's no shame in using Tinkercad. No shame. If you just want to do a super simple type of thing, this might work out super well for you. Thanks for watching, everybody. I appreciate you. I appreciate your time. Hopefully, this helped you in your 3D modeling journey. And I will see you again very soon.